it's the same thing. It's really good Bobby Jones. So
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Haven's Priest Ballpark in Houston, Texas for the 2021 Post Oak Little League Championship Saturday. My name is Merle Birch, and Vipe Live Broadcast Director, formed by the Commissioner of the Pee Wee League, Mr. Christian O'Neill, Gentry Williams, our producer. Uh, Christian, nice to have you with us. Beautiful sunny day. Knock on wood. Oh. Hopefully we get all this baseball in here today. Merle, it is great to be here. It's a pleasure to be beside you, and we do have a beautiful day for baseball. It is, it is a gorgeous day here. Well, this is our uh, third time in four years broadcasting these games. Of course, everything wiped out last year because of COVID. And uh, this game here, the Pee Wee matchup between the Owls and the Irish, um, <coughs> excuse me, a rematch of the last championship game two, uh, two years ago. I believe that was won by the Owls 9-4. to four. How weird is that to skip yeah, a year and still have the same two teams? Well, I just wish I would have so selected the Irish or the Owls as my team this year <laughs> as I coached through because it seems they were destined to be in the championship game. Uh, that uh, that Owls team victorious that they are the standing pole champion because of COVID right. coached by none other than Sugar Shane Hildreth and uh, we'll see if uh, the Owls can keep that tradition today uh, this is going to be a great ball game two very well coached teams and one thing that's interesting you're going to see it all with the first of four ball games here today we've got the, the juniors we've got the minors and majors and if, if I remember right the same pattern holds in all of them it, you talk about the NCAA March Madness brackets being busted. You got the number three against the number five. I don't think a number one made it to the championship game, did they? I am, I am for sure in this division, and I'm 99% sure in the other divisions that it, the, the number one seeds. That's a heavy weight to carry coming into these tournaments. That's a lot of pressure to bear. Uh, been there, done that once before, <laughs> and it, uh, it, it'll wear on you. But uh, a lot of great teams, a lot of great baseball, and it's, it's anybody's game, anybody's bracket. I know one of the uh, games coming up, we got a number 18 seed playing in the championship game. So That's this right. one is number five. The Owls come in with the regular season with a mark of 11-4-1 and one against number three, the Irish. They came in with a mark of 12-2. and two. And how they got here, uh, the Owls got a first round by, defeated the Bruins 13-10. Hard to read the laptop here in this bright sun, not that I'm complaining. Then defeated the Cougars 9-8 and defeated the Tar Heels 9-8 as well to make it to this championship game. That's for the, Rowl, the Owls for the Irish. Let me back up here and find them. Got a first round bye as well. Defeated the Trojans 21 to nothing. Defeated the, uh, I can't read what that is, Common uh, the Commodores. Commodores, uh, 9 to 8. Whoops, and I uh, knocked myself off the screen. And then defeated the Rebels 15 to 4, I believe the final score was, to make it to this championship game. So that kind of sets the table here, and one game to decide it all. That's right, Merle. When you think about it, we, we all started preparing for this game in January. So it's been 110 days to get to this game. These kids have been working hard. Coach has been coaching hard. It's been a really fun, rewarding season. And, and the, uh, the caliber of baseball has just gotten better and better as we've gone on, as these kids get better, which is what it's all about. And you're going to see uh, two very good defensive teams here today. Uh, they can also, that both teams also have some big sticks, some big hitters. We're going to see some balls at the warning track, if not over, and we're going to see some outstanding uh, glove work. I tell you what, the, uh, the
The right side of this Irish infield has two All-Stars on it, both third base and the shortstop are two named All-Stars. So very tough defense, very tough to get a ball through that side of that, of that infield. Irish, the home team in this one, the Owls and Visitors, six inning games. And a couple of other little wrinkles that you can see here in this Pee Wee League, uh, eight, eight and nine-year-olds. <clears throat> I believe it's a pitching machine instead of pitching. And I think everybody bats. You've got 12 men batting lineups. Is that correct, sir? Yes, it's a continuous batting order. Each team has 12 on their roster, and that ball's coming in at 43 miles an hour. So we'll give the lineup here. The Owls will send up Oliver Volts, Eric Savitz, Burke Wise, Lee Hockner, Kellen McCartney, Everett Eichsman, Richard Smith, Pablo Pereira, Ryan Bethencourt, Liam Van Volkenberg, Lane Kellner, and Shepard Scott for the Owls. Absolutely. Good hard-hitting team here. They're going to put the ball in play early here. Uh, first up, we do have Oliver Volts. Uh, interesting note about him, he isn't just a baseball player. He's also a Ninja Warrior competitor. Oh, wow. And he Very went to cool. the Texas State Championship Ninja Warrior competition. So, We're about ready to get this one underway in the first pitch, and we are underway on Championship Saturday. Very common for all these batters to watch that first pitch, Merle. And that ball, bat handled over to the right side. And takes a funny bounce, gonna roll out in the right field for a leadoff single. So Volts is aboard. Well, Volts reaches, good aggressive running through first base, and we got a runner on there, Merle. And this will bring up Eric Savitz. Eric Savitz, much like uh, Coach O, is a Whataburger man. He loves his Whataburger. <laughs> little adjustment to the pitching machine there. Is it possible to blame the umpire with the pitching machine? <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure coaches would find a way. You know he is uh, he's a pretty good pitcher. He's thrown a lot of pitches <laughs> this year. No pitch count on him? He goes the distance every week. A tip to steal, throw down to second. They got a chance they're gonna get him. Boy I tell you what great defensive play by the Irish. Uh, excellent throw and a, and a great tag by Bertillion there. Uh, very much the consensus, perhaps the best shortstop this year out here. Robbie Huffman, the catcher. And that's a hot fly ball in the left field, and that ball drops in there. Fighting the center as a left fielder, and that'll put a runner aboard with the air. You know, so these games are sometimes won and lost out here by who can catch that pop fly in the outfield. Right. It's, uh, it's often a big turning point. Sometimes a good catch out there is as exciting as a home run. And that pitch down low, ball one. So we have uh, Burke Wise here, big bat, big bat. I've seen Burke put quite a few to the warning track this year, almost over. And this one popped in the air to get into the left field, pretty well tagged, and that ball's gonna be up against the fence. Runner had to hold that first in case it was caught. Now we gotta play a third base, ball gets loose on the infield. And now loose, and the pitcher picks it up and chases him back to third. So a single, he'll take second on the throw in the infield. One is a second and third here for the Owls with one away. Great hit by Burke, uh, he's, you know, he's, uh, He's a big hitter, he likes to eat sushi, so he must have had some good <laughs> tuna rolls before the game. So runners at second and third for Lee Hockner with one away. Lee Hockner is a uh, big, you know. Yeah, throw down to third, safe at third. I actually looked down at the exact wrong moment there, so help me out. What what uh, what just took place? So we just got uh, Hockner drives in, the, got the run in, got it, got an RBI uh, out at first base. Game's one one nothing. So field is choice RBI. Okay. Exactly. Yes, sir. All righty. So two outs now. Runner at third. That's Weiss. As Savitz scores, and this will bring up Kellen McCartney. Ground ball left side, scooped up. Shorts out throw to first in time. Nice play and a nice Pilates stretch. Be beautiful stretch by Terry there. Yeah. Looks like his time uh, with the Russian Olympic gymnast <laughs> is paying off with a split like that. Uh, if I did that, I'd be in the hospital. Uh, me and you both. Excellent play, excellent defense there. I tell you what, you hit it to, to, to that shortstop third side of the Irish infield, it's tough to get a ball through. The one run on three hits, one air, run on the left on base. We played through one half inning of play. The Owls won. And the Irish, nothing. The Irish has sent up a lineup. It looks like Robbie Huffman, Driscoll Bertillion, Bo Ter, Ter, Charlie Amis, Carter Moore, Owen Keller, Benji Trelevin, Jack Yarrow, 
Bruce Sharp, Wyatt Almy, Antonio Opengo, and Luke Young, the batting order for the Irish. You know, Merle, we enjoyed a lot of close games this year out here, arguably more than, than any other I've seen in my, my years out here. We had 22 ties throughout the regular wow. season in about 300 and some odd games. So it was uh, a lot of good baseball, a lot of parity. And uh, th these, these games for the playoffs have all been very tight as well. I remember last time I was here two years ago at the quality of play, even even at this le at level. I mean, when I was played Pee Wee and eight, eight, nine years old, we were happy if we could tie our shoes without <laughs> tripping over each other. I will tell you what, these kids play a lot of baseball at, at a young age, and they're pr pretty coached up. This Post Oak community puts out some really, really good ball players, and there's a lot of families highly committed to it, and it, it shows. It shows in uh, how they play during the season. It shows when they represent Post Oak in the postseason in district play and state and all the way to the Little League World Series. Robbie Hoffman will step in here if so they can call up. Nope, that's not it. There it is. Hard to see the lap up here in this bright sun. Yeah, Robbie's solid, uh, solid baseball player. He was the catcher there who threw threw, uh, threw that runner out in the last inning as well. He uh, he's thrown out ten runners this year, Merle. So uh, now he's going to have to think about doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> One nothing. Owls on top. Irish coming up here in the bottom half of the first inning. Huffman sporting a uh, 480 batting average in the leadoff spot here for the Irish. Goes by the nickname of Rob Bob. I like that. And that ball swinging on the first pitch and caught by the I believe that was the second that, baseman that, coming over, was it not? Yeah, I think that was uh, first base. That was, first base, uh, that okay. Was, uh, Lex, uh, Hockner made that play. So one pitch, one out. We're kind of a fun, funky angle to, to adjust. So a line out for three on one pitch, one away. That'll bring up Driscoll Bertillion. Driscoll Bertillion sporting a gaudy 755 batting average here. So uh, this kid can put the ball in play and he can run the bases. Good eye there at that pitch down low. 750, wow. I don't care what league you're in, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> I tell you what. Yeah, the only thing Driscoll loves more than baseball is school. Uh, he actually was excited to take the star test this past week. He has been selected as a student uh, for being a, a great thinker, balanced, good communicator, and very principled. I would agree with that. I've coached, him. Him. I've coached him on a select team before. This guy is all about his teammates. That's awesome. Great team player. Yeah, popped up coming right at us here. A little 3D big. Oh, nice catch by a fan. Just off to the right side. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't even spill anything that was in that star I know. cup right there. <laughs> It's because we're in the first inning. Give it a few innings, maybe. You know it. You've been Ground out ball here, side. That's a fair ball inside Excellent. the line. And Ronnie first heading for second. He will pull in there with a one-out double. And the ball kind of got caught in the corner. Good shot there by good old Drisco. Down there in the coffin corner. Legging out two. You know, we now we have uh, Boatier, Merle. We do so many games on carpet, you can't say it's a worm burner. We finally got to say it's a worm burner <laughs> exactly. on the natural grass. That's true. Bo goes by the nickname of Bo Bear. Uh, interesting fact about him, he is an eight-year-old. He's one of the younger guys out here, but uh, has played at a very high level, at holding down first base all year for the Irish. Batting 5.53. Had the nice stretch there to retire the side. Swung on that pitch back to the screen, strike one. into the fringe and caught by the shortstop. Nice Very nice play there. by Wise there. So two outs now, the pop out, and that'll bring up Charlie Amis. Here you go, Charlie Amis goes by the nickname of Chuck. And first pitch taking, inside ball one. So uh, he comes from a baseball family, actually. Uh, his his great uncle, great great uncle, has a college baseball stadium named after him at MSU. Oh wow! The Duddy Noble Stadium. 
That's pretty cool. I'm sure his great great uncle is smiling down upon him today. <laughs> that one back to the shortstop. Got it. The throw over to first. In time. Back to back. Plays by each for shortstop to retire the side. And there's some of that defense you were talking about at the start of the show. Well, I'm telling you, these are two very, very tight infields. Two great plays by Wise there. So in the inning, no runs. The double is wasted. No errors. One more to left on base. We play through one. We'll go to the top half of the second inning. One to nothing. Owls on top. Happy to have you with us here on this Saturday afternoon. You know, in between innings here, Mar, I'd like to give a special shout-out. So uh, Coach Le Lex Hockner's father uh, had a little medical incident out here in one of the playoff games, and he's, he's resting well and recovering at the hospital. And uh, on behalf of the entire Rice Owls family and Coach Hockner and everybody here at Pole, we want to say hi, Grandpa. Hi, Lex. Uh, we know you're in the uh, pulling, pulling for your boy, and uh, we were glad to get this broadcast to you. And we just want to recognize you and know we've got prayers for a quick recovery for you. Awesome. I second the motion. That, that's one of my favorite things about doing not just this broadcast, but all the broadcasts we do here on Vibe. It's great for the fan, you know, the, the, the moms and dads that can go watch the broadcast afterwards. It's for the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles and the friends that might be off in college a chance to, to, to stay connected with their community and their team well after they've graduated from high school. Absolutely. It's amazing what technology does. Isn't it? As Everett Eichsman will step in to lead off the second inning. It used to be a lot simpler back in the days when we just did audio broadcasts. Now we got a lot more stuff to cart around. <laughs> Round ball left side, and nice shorthand scoop by the third baseman to throw it at first. One hand, or one hop, is going to go back to the screen. And he will hold up at second. Well, good, good scoop by Amos there at third, uh, flashing that glove, and just missed him at first. So runner at second, that'll bring up Richard Smith. Old Richard Smith loves to go fishing, but his favorite food is steak. He uh, played catcher for uh, for a little bit for this team. Popped up, and that's going to go foul the right side. I played catcher, excuse me, for a few weeks with staples in his head. Oh, wow. So he gets the Tough Guy Award this year. Catchers are a different breed. You know it. My dad used to say they were born with the tools of ignorance now. I don't know <laughs> if he was talking about me, but that was one of his favorite sayings. Catchers and hockey goalies, you got to be a special breed of cat to do that voluntarily. You know that. That one off the bat handle and going to take the, bot, the hop and roll over to second base. Everybody's going to be safe. That's the case we got to kind of aggressively come in and play, and he'll, he'll learn that and make the adjustment for next year. That's it. That's right. Foul ball. I'm All right, we are back. Apologize for the delay. The laptop actually overheated and shut down. It's the bright sun. It's cool, not that hot out here, but it's in the sun. It was beaten down and overheated the laptop. So we're back up and running now. The score is six to nothing. We'll get you caught up here between the innings. Burke Wise is at the plate with runners at second and third, first and third. Fly ball in the center field. Caught by the shortstop. And well, I tell you what, side. old Drisco Bertillion uh, demonstrating that range that he has right there. Anything from uh, the foul line to shallow center, that's his territory. And that boy's got the speed to range and go get it. So Everett Eichsman reached on an air. Infield single for Richard Smith. Single for Pereira. Single, I believe, for Bethancourt. And then back-to-back -back errors. Strikeout Shepard Scott. Two RBI double for Oliver Volts. Infield single for Savitz, and then Brooke Wise popped out to retire the side, and we'll go to the bottom half of the second inning. Six to nothing, Owls on top. Well, I tell you what, the Rice Owls put the pedal down there. Uh, that was a great inning, a lot of good offense, and uh, helped out a little bit by the Irish, but that's part of Pee Wee baseball, and we'll see what the Irish have here. And, Gentry, if you got something to cover up the laptop to keep the direct sun off of it, because the sun's going to come through those clouds again, and just do the best you can to cover it up. So apologize that we missed a, missed a few batters there, missed a few runs. Mother Nature always wins. We found that out this year, well, here in Texas especially. That's very true. Uh, at Ice Storm Uri, Ooh. it's hard enough to, uh, to squeeze in all these games. We've got to squeeze in on this one baseball field. But you get something like the winter storm or a rainy week, right? it is a jigsaw puzzle. 
that was opening day for us, Merle. Oh, man. So we had to postpone everything and then restart. So here we go to the bottom of the second inning, 6 to nothing. Irish trying to claw back into the ball game, and this will be Carter Moore due up. Carter Moore sporting a 596 batting average this year. Goes by the nickname of C Money. I like that. I do too. I often see him. He's a he's family's a neighbor of mine. I see him walking their dog around the neighborhood. His dog, by the way, the name is Bones. <laughs> Swinging a miss there. And he's asked me uh, to give his Mimi and Papa a special shout out. So Mimi and Papa watching this game in Fort Worth. Shout out to you from your boy Carter. There you go. Friend of, friend of mine named his dog Stay. Come <laughs> here, Stay. <laughs> Swing and a miss. That's a great name. It is. And Carter Moore strikes out for the first out of the inning. First strike out of the ball game recorded by the pitching machine, and that'll bring up Owen Keller. Owen Keller goes by the nickname of OK Corral. Must be a fan of famous gunfights. <laughs> I was out here watching the semifinal game, and Owen had a big hit. He had an in-the-park home run against the Rebels to get here. Oh, wow. Big clutch hit. Fly ball right side, drifting, and that ball is a foul ball. Down the right field line. Great to see the support out here, Merle. I'm telling you, we've got uh, – there isn't a spot on this fence line to be found. That's today. true. Standing room only. Popped up again on the right side and coming on. That's going to drop between the pitcher and the first baseman. Oh, boy. And colors the board. Oh, going to bring up Benji Trail Evan with the runner at first and one away. Old Benji, number four, left fielder, batting 341 on the year. Youngest of four boys, so you know he's got to be tough. <laughs> Especially around dinner time, right? Oh, you know it. Goes by the nickname of Tree Trunks. Which misses low and away. Sounds like at that trough they like a lot of salmon rolls and pizza, according to my notes, Merle. Ah, that's it's a good awesome. combination. Fly ball left side, caught in foul territory by the third baseman. I got a chance to double him up over to first. And they got him. Great heads up play by the Owls there, Merle. That is outstanding baseball. Third baseman here in this second inning is uh, uh, McCartney. He made the catch in foul territory, fired a strike over first base to double up Keller. And we have played through two. We'll go to the top of the third inning, still six to nothing. The old rally killer right there. You know it. That's always a big one. You know, those double plays are uh, somewhat hard to come by on the Pee Wee field, and when they happen, it's gut-wrenching to yep, the other side. Yep. Trying to keep our computer cool here while we erect a tent behind us. Before five and six hitters do up here for the Owls, it'll be Lee Hockner to lead it off. Thank you to Enrique Rodriguez and Justin Barbosa, they'll be calling the minors and the majors games later on today, but they're over here supporting us as we battle the sunshine, battle the bulky technology. You know, that pitcher out there goes by the name of Josh Bowen. He's our lead umpire out here. He has done a heck of a year managing the greatest circus on earth, which is post Oak <laughs> Pee Wee Baseball. So I'd like to give a shout out to Josh. Uh, he's kind of the heart and soul of this thing. And he keeps it on the railroad tracks for us. He's done an outstanding job this year. So, Josh, thanks for all your hard work this year, big guy. How many years? Or how many years? How many hours do you guys spend a week out here? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. There is, uh, let's see. There is two games every weeknight. Three games on Fridays. Saturdays and Sundays are full of games. We have 21 teams in the league, and we play all of our games on this one, on one single field. field. It's amazing so. this grass left. Well, I'll tell you, i got to give a shout-out to Derek Dooley, who manages our fields, and uh, Kevin and her crew. Uh, we have a wonderful 
wonderful crew that works really hard to keep these up. Looks like we've got a soccer ball on the field nope. though, Merle. Wrong sport. Uh, Lee Hockner steps in here. He had an infield uh, RBI single back in the first inning. Yeah, Hopner made the final out to help get them here. He uh, he was uh, he was attributed with the final out to win that semifinal game, which was a very close game. And pokes that one out in the left field for a leadoff single. Now it takes a funny hop. It's going to roll to the wall. So Hopner's going to be on second base to start off the third inning. Now the ball gets loose on the infield, but they got a chance to play at third. They got him huh, between second and third. And they're going to get him. Wow. I think well, that went, what, seven, four, five, six, five, something like that? That's it. That's it. I'll tell you what, that's two heads-up ball players right there, uh, Bertillion and Amos, playing catch every day, back and forth, and uh, nice job keeping that runner fenced in right yep. there. So one out base is empty for Kellen McCartney. Grind it out to short to retire the side in the first inning. Kellen, the third baseman, who made that great play to double up the Irish last inning. Batting 600 on the year. Goes by the nickname of K-Pop, or K-Man. Likes his cheeseburgers. <laughs> Ketchup only, though. No mustard? No mustard, straight wow. up. He likes to play Fortnite and Minecraft as well. One out base is empty. Ground ball. Short snap, scooping it up to throw over to first in time, and another 6 3 put out. Luke Young there, the shortstop, for the put out, and there's two away. That'll bring up Everett Eichsman. He reached on an air, scored the second run of the ball game back in the second inning. Oh, Everett has a special talent. He can correctly recall scores, scores from every game this year from memory. Popped up out of play to the right side. His parents say he's a real hard negotiator. He negotiates for ice cream after every practice if he hits well. Foul back. Well, you know, if you remember everything like that, your parents aren't going to be able to slip stuff by you. You know it. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Yep, we've got a foul tip. Just got a piece of it there. Foul tip. Got a piece of the catcher as yeah, well. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, these Irish catchers are pretty coached up. Uh, Coach Bertillion actually caught for the Houston Cougars. Went to Omaha when he played for them for Coach Rainer Noble. It's a fair ball to throw to first, and it is in time. What a play. Wow, what a play. What a play. Amos with a nice backhand wow. in foul territory. Let me tell you. Woo. I tell you what, Merle, that, that was an outstanding effort by both those boys. Yep. And the first baseman tear again, keeping that foot on the bag. And it's a 1 2 3 inning, nothing across here in the third for the Owls. Boy, I'm telling you, that's a special, special play there. Well, a lot of times defense will spark the offense. That's what the Irish need here as they trail 6 0 going to the bottom of you the are, third. You're right about that, Merle. They got to get something going. I'm Merle Bertrand. He is Christian O'Neill, commissioner of the Pee Wee League. Gentry Williams, our producer. Merle, I'm going to take a take take a a minute, and uh, I want to say thanks to the the LSU Tiger family this year. So I had the pleasure of coaching the Tigers, and I want to give them a shout out. All the boys, all the family, uh, appreciate everything this year. So thanks for indulging me there. Absolutely, yeah. I remember when we first came out here three years ago, uh, right after we used to be KMX Sports, right after we first started working as part of Vipe and just kind of getting immersed in all this. And man, when I played Little League, we, we had no uniforms. We had a baseball cap that was donated by a seed corn company. <laughs> I mean, just to see this and experience this little level of dedication with all the fans and all the parents and the uniforms, it's, it's pretty awesome. 
Merle, I can't agree more. Um, there's a lot of coaches out here who's ki who grew up in the system. Right. They, a lot of these guys out here actually played at Post Oak. Uh, and I, I'm fortunate enough to find Post Oak. I'm originally from Louisiana, but it's been great to get over here. And I really have never seen a baseball community quite like it. Right. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And there's a lot of really hardworking people behind this, particularly the moms, the women's auxiliary uh all the coaches, all the commissioners, we all say they really run this thing, and they do. They they put in all the work, all the touches, and that's what makes this thing go. Avon Speaks Ballpark, a four ballpark complex. We'll have a game right behind us here at 3 o'clock. Two games coming up at 5 and 7 over on the uh, the majors field later on today. Actually, our game's at 5 o'clock. Those games are at 3 and 7. That's right. That's all running together. You know it. You know it. As Jack Yarrow steps in to lead off the Irish half of the third inning, down 6 nothing. Jack holds down center field for the Irish. Uh, goes by the nickname of Jack Attack. Batting 488. <laughs> See here, he's got one of those infectious smiles. He loves being around his family and his friends. And a nice play there on the 4-3 putout. Eric Savitz. The second baseman with the play, 4-3, one away. That'll bring up Bruce Sharp. Bruce Sharp, a.k.a. Bruiser. These guys had a big comeback win against the Commodores. They came back from 8-2, to two, so who knows? The Irish might just be the comeback kids. Maybe they got something here for us. Maybe they, they, have, they maybe have them right where they want them. Yeah, right? <laughs> Swing and a miss. I want to give a shout out of my own to DeAndre Rimbanu, our QA back at the comfy, cozy Vipe, <coughs> excuse me, Vipe Live Studios, better known as her living room sofa. <coughs> Ground ball left side. I'll go and hit on the left field for a base hit for Sharp. We always have somebody monitoring each and every one of our broadcasts to make sure that it's on the air, that it looks and sounds good. And she was the first one to let us know that we had dropped off. So thank you, DeAndre, for giving up her Saturday for us here today. As Wyatt Almy steps in. Wyatt's the right fielder. Merle, he's batting 282. Young Wyatt is fluent in three languages. That is two more than wow. Coach O. <laughs> three languages and he's eight, eight or nine years old. And he's fluent in them all. Wow. As you can tell from this broadcast, I'm barely fluent in English. <laughs> that one, that's gonna be a fair ball. And throw it, oh, throw it over oh, the right my. field, in the, up against oh, the wow. fence. That run's going to score there, Merle. They're going to wave him around. And the throw coming in, not going to be in time, and the Irish are on the board. There you go. Well, Merle, I will tell you, a hit like that is one of the most dangerous hits in Pee Wee baseball. <laughs> the old swing and bunt, but right. very effective. And uh, not the first time we've seen a swinging bunt bringing an RBI. And that'll bring up Antonio Pingo. Irish on the board, six to one now. With the runner at second base and one away. Pingo batting 363, left fielder. Goes by the nickname of O Pingo. <laughs> Hope I got that right. I might have just ended my uh, broadcasting career right there, Merle. <laughs> he likes to play the piano. Antonio is a bit of a renaissance man, Merle. First thing he does when he gets up in the morning is go downstairs and tickle the Irish. Very cool. Also likes to dance and make jokes. Swing and a miss there. Pitching machine pulled the string on that one. That one tapped again, almost the same spot. Throw over to first and that's gonna be off the line. Everybody's gonna be safe runners at first and third. I think he would have beat that one anyway. Well, Merle, I'll tell you, that's two in a row there. Yep. And now, uh, I believe it might almost back to the top. I've got 44. I didn't have this one on my uh, lineup here. This is Everett Eichsman coming in. I had him batting. Now this is Young, 44. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong roster. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> oh, I, that's right. I, I wrote, okay. Yeah, it is Luke Young. Yep. Luke Young. I put down number 12, he's a 12th batter, not <laughs> number 12. There you go. So Luke Young will step in, he'll be the last batter to bat for the first time in the ball game. 
Luke Young's batting 423 on the year. His favorite hobby is playing board games. Uh, look for him to put it in play here, Merle. Luke, this year, only recorded one strikeout. Wow. Yeah, if he can put it in play, he'll get his Irish right back in the ball game. They're down by five, but we're only in the third inning. Yeah, I believe if uh, Luke gets on here somehow, some way, then we're back to the top of the order. Right. All me a third, a pingo at first, one run in for the Irish. And just one away here for Luke Young. Powell back. So one strike here to Young. That ball, line shot, out in the right field for a base hit. One runner's gonna score, they're gonna wave the runner over to third base, and we're gonna have runners at the corners again, still with one out, in what is now a 6-2 ball game. Well, the back of the order did their job there, yeah. Merle. On the scores, a pingo over to third. Back to the top of the order will go to Robbie Huffman. Six to two now. Well, Rob Bob wants to be a veterinarian when he grows up. Take care of those animals. Lined out to first in the first inning. That ball slapped, and that is a oh, wow. fair ball. Fair. One runner's going to score. Runner at first held up, so it'll be runners at first and second. Well, that must have just squirted over. Yeah. It's, it's hard to see from here, but uh, that umpire was right on it. So a pingo scores, now 6-3. to three. Young up to second base. And that'll bring up Driscoll Bertillion, who had a double in the first. Old Drisco season highlight, he turned a 6-4-3 double play to end the game against the Cougars this year. Wow, that is tough to do at this level. You know it. Kind of tough to do for my Chicago Cubs these days. One <laughs> <laughs> is at first and second, still just one out. Irish are creeping back into the ball game. Foul out of play to the left side. Good job by Coach Pugh. Saving a young man. Yeah. Got to be on your toes out here. You know it. <laughs> well, Christian, it's a championship game. You knew that the Irish weren't going to go down quietly. Oh, that's for sure. Popped up on the left side. See if the ballpark will hold it. It drops in there. Good effort. Good effort by McCartney. Kind of fighting the sun, fighting the fence. A lot of people. Might be the biggest crowd these young men have played for. I mean, this place is jam-packed. There is no doubt. But they foul again. There is no doubt about it. This is uh, this is outstanding. And I tell you what, a day like today, Championship Saturday, it just grows and grows and yeah. grows with the crescendo being the majors game at right. 7 o'clock, and that will be a full-on party. Up on line shot. Wow. Oh, oh, nice catch by the shortstop. And they're going to get him out at third. They say great stab by Wise. Great stab by Wise there, saving a, you know, what could have been an extra base hit and Did knocked he, it down and made the play at third. So he must have dropped it. Okay. Dropped I it. thought he caught it. Yep. All right. So it's a force out at third. Yes, sir. So 6 5 force for the second out of the inning. Runner still at first and second for Bo Ted. A uh, Botair, pardon me. Yeah, here's Tier, the first baseman up. 
Huffman to second, Bertillion to first, now two away for Terry. He popped out the short in the first inning. A ball poked into shallow center field, and that ball is dropped. And everybody's going to be safe, and the run's going to score. Running all the way with two outs, alert base running by Huffman, and it's 6-4. to four. Well, crazy things will happen out yeah. here, Merle. <laughs> That'll bring up Charlie Amos, which one is at first and second, tying runs aboard. I'm glad we're not the only ones fighting the technology. The scoreboard's out. That's, that's, <laughs> that's why we're glad we got you, Merle, and your old school scorebook. A lot of people into Game Changer now. When I saw you holding that thing, I, it just gave me a warm feeling all over. Amos grounded out to short in the first inning. And that one fouled out of play to the left side. Runners at first and second with two away. Bertillion at second, Tear at first. Gentry Williams, our producer, with an umbrella hovering over the computer to keep it cool. Ground ball. Oh, I don't know what's going for a base hit. Going to roll to the wall. One run's going to score. They get the ball in. But it's going to be a double, and it's six to five. As Bertillion scores, Tear up to third. Amos at second for Carter Moore. Not much you can do, Merle, when they hit it right there in the gap. Right. And a good effort by Wise trying to track that one. A good five, base run by the Irish. A five run inning for the Irish. They're not done as Carter Moore steps in, struck out in the second inning. Swung on, tap foul. You can hear coach in the third base box maybe may saying uh, two outs, run on anything. You know it. Ground ball, up the oh, middle wow. for a base hit. That's going to score a run, that's going to score two. And the Irish are going to have the lead. A seven run third for the Irish and it's seven to six. Boy, I tell you what. Demonstrated a little bit of that comeback kid that's in their right. DNA. You said they put up five this inning, Merle? Seven. Seven this inning. Wow. That's quite. You know, uh, we take the run rule off in the playoffs, Merle, in, in, the, in the course of the regular season. That'd be the end of the inning, five run rule. But uh, we, we, we take the lid off uh, during the playoffs, and a lot of exciting things happen when you do that. Yeah. So seven, six, Irish with the lead for Owen Keller with a runner at first, still two away. Seventh hit of the inning. Little scribble to the right side. That's going to drop down. Second baseman has it. Throw to first in time to retire the side. But not before the Irish get seven runs on seven hits, helped out by an error. And they leave a runner. We are halfway through this one. New ball game, 7-6 to six Irish on top. Hats off to the Irish for keeping their chins up and yep. heads in the game and not getting down. They uh, they came out and battled. A lot of baseball left here, Merle. Three innings left, and it'll be 7-8-9. Hitters do up here for the Owls. The guys that did all their damage back in the second inning, and I know you read a lot of the – Wrote a lot of the personal stuff for those guys last time. Go ahead and do it again because we were off the air for part of that. So oh, sure, sure, sure. You make bet. sure we get that in for their, their folks out there. Absolutely. Absolutely, Merle. So we're starting with Richard Smith this inning, is that correct? Uh, yes, no? sir, yep. All right. Richard Smith, catcher. Batting 596 on the year. He loves to fish, and his favorite food is steak. So he likes to catch the fish, put them in the freezer, and they need a big old ribeye, I guess, Merle. <laughs> well, it's good that you like steak if you, you know, maybe you have a bad day fishing. You don't need, you don't need to depend on the fish to eat that way, I'll tell you what, nothing wrong with that. He's a tough guy, Merle. We were talking about catchers earlier. This, this guy played a couple of weeks with staples in his head. Right. 
I'm not sure that's legal and approved by the commissioner, but I'm <laughs> glad they got away with it, and I'm glad he played well. That's why you wear a hat. You can hide that stuff. That's right. That's right. I'm pretty sure my catcher lost his, his true baseball hat the first week of the season. <laughs> he had his gear on all year. Right. A little out of bed in the morning, still wearing it. Yeah, it's hard for an eight, nine-year-old to sometimes keep track of those hats. I, I usually <laughs> buy about 25 for a 13-man roster because <laughs> you're going to need a few extras. Yeah. So here's Smith, infield single. Ah, now, now Richard's highlight was against the mighty LSU Tigers, coached by none other than me. When he got the game ball, he caught a pop-up foul, threw to third, got someone out stealing, and got a triple on two hits. Wow, pretty good night. Yeah, I remember him vividly. <laughs> Coaches never forget, do they? No, they don't. Popped up on the infield, and it is playable by the pitcher. Nice play by Moore there. So Smith pops out to the pitcher, one away, that'll bring up Pablo Pereira. Good play there. You know, these pitchers get a lot of action out here in Pee Wee's, Merle. It is a very strategic position. I will tell you, they get uh, probably the second, second most balls hit to them compared to the shortstop. Shorts. Really? About 60, 50, 60% of these balls tend to go to short, and a lot of them end up at the pitcher as well. Swung out foul tip. So Perea's up. Pablo goes by the nickname of Pauly. Left fielder batting 356 on the year. Perea. His last name means pear tree. Had a single scored in the second inning. And that pitch down low. That ball poked out in a right field for a base hit over the first baseman's head. Going to roll to the wall. That is a dangerous spot to hit over there. And he's going to pull up at second with a one-out double. Nice throw in there from right field. Hold that runner at second. One thing I'm not sure comes through on the video, this ballpark at the fringe, it slopes pretty dramatically to the outfield. I would say it's a good foot and a half, two foot lower out there in the outfield. It does. And I tell you what, a lot of times you get a little flare that can drop kick off there. And I bet, the yeah. As Ryan Bethencourt steps in, and he fouls it back to the screen. He reached and scored in the second inning. Well, Ryan's uh, teammates call him Rhino. Pitcher for the Owls, batted 469 on the year. He likes to eat steak. That ball is going to drop into left field for a base hit. They are going to wave the runner around third. The throw coming in, not going to be tied in time, but we're tied up at seven. RBI single to the left for Bethancourt. He must have had a steak for breakfast yeah. today. That's Pereira Great scores. Hit. And that'll bring up Liam Van Volkenberg. Reached on an error and scored in the second inning. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. The right fielder, also known as the Warrior, batting 475. He's a crab hunter. Loves to chase crabs on the beach in the summertime. Oh, oh and that's going to be goodness. a double play. A nice oh, job by the first goodness, baseman Merle. there. Diving to his right to catch it in foul territory. Lunging back and tapping the bag to double up Bethancourt inning over. Merle, let me tell you something. That was a play beyond Pee Wee baseball right there. Yep. That was a beautiful heads up. Awesome play. That'll get you fired up. And the, the Irish were fired up as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning, tied up seven apiece. I keep going back to what you said at the start of the show about the defense we're going to see here today. Boy, we've seen it. I'm telling you, both these teams can flash that glove. Both these teams have some infielders with some pipes for arms, and they're well coached. You know, that was a very heads-up play right there. Trying to get my foot caught up here. Two, three, four. Six. One, two, three, four, five. Merle, I tell you what, I'll give there you, you a, a funny story of how Vipe has changed Pee Wee baseball for All us right. here. So, 
you know, most of us, uh, if not all of us, subscribe, and there isn't a coach out here that doesn't go break down film after a game. And uh, Josh Bowen, who's our, our head up, you know, I'm not sure when he knew that the cameras were on the whole season how comfortable <laughs> it was as we don't have instant replay. But I will tell you, after watching the tape of, of my games out of here, this ump umping crew out here has been spot on 90% of the time. Everything else is bam, bam. So, But I'll tell you a funny story. It, it, after, after a game where there's a close call, it's very common that amongst us 42 coaches, a little snippet of film will go out and say, hey, I told you so. <laughs> so Vipe is changing the game. Well, good. For better or for worse, right? For better, for better. <laughs> now, where's my margarita, Merle? There you go. As Bendy Trelevin will lead off here, the 7 8 9 hitters go up here for the Irish in a 7 7 ball game, bottom of the fourth inning. Trelevin popped out to, I think, third baseman. Can't read my scorebook. That's the downside. <laughs> I was a straight A student in grade school, except for handwriting. I could never <laughs> get above a C minus. I appreciate I can appreciate that. Fouled back to the screen. He's 0 for 1 in any event. Looking to start it off here for the Irish in the fourth. What a great baseball game here through four, Merle. This is the way it should be. Yep. <laughs> Ground ball. Right side. And the 4 3 put up. One away for Jack Arrow. I think Savitz is one of the best second basemen out here, Merle. Been watching him all year. He's silky smooth, knows where to go. He's done a great job for these Owls this year. He's part of that tight, tight, tight infield they have. And yeah, one of the things, well, we'll wait till after this pitch that misses outside. One of the things I noticed that ball kind of came up on his heel a little bit, but he didn't panic, knew he had time, just gathered himself and got the out plenty of time. Teaching these kids, teaching these kids that they got they got more they got more time to make that throw is part right. of the deal, you know. Swing and a miss, strike one. Yarrow, 0 for 1 in the ball game. He grounded out to Savitz, his last at bat. Yarrow in the quarterfinals had a, a, he drove in the winning run against the Commodores, the bottom of the sixth, to advance the Irish to the semifinals. And one of those clutch hits would come in right. handy right here. Got two strikes on him now, with one away. Ground ball left side. Knocked down by McCartney to throw to first. In time, nice play. Very nice. You know, one of those things these third basemen have to learn out here is <laughs> how to navigate that throw over Josh, yeah. around the pitch machine, <laughs> over the woods and through the woods to grandmother's <laughs> house we go. But uh, McCartney had it right there. He had to put a little, uh, little air underneath it, but right. got there in time. Got a nice uh, handshake there by the Irish coach. Nice sportsmanship there. Two outs, bases empty for Bruce Sharp. Singled and scored in the third inning. Here's the bruiser. That ball. Oh, under the glove, out right in the left field. This didn't come up the way Wise thought it was going to. Good job by the center fielder, Scott, to keep that to a single. And Wyatt Almy will step in, reach out an air, scored in the third inning. I'm not sure how it was officially scored. That's that little number out in front of the plate. We consider that a hit in Pee Wee's. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Works for me. That ball gets back to the backstop, uh, and the runner can move up to second base. Haven't seen one of those. That's the no. first, first pass ball of the game. Two outs, runner at second. I'll be looking for a two-out single to try to put his club back in front. Foul back to the screen. Good cut there. It's really pleasant when the sun goes behind the clouds. Sure is. Pretty stiff breeze blowing in from left to right. Ground ball, left side. McCartney has it. The throw over to first, and it is not a time. Now well, they got the runner hung up here, trying to go over to third base, and they're going to get him. A low play by the first baseman for the Owls. Very heads up play there by, by Hockner. So Almy with the infield single, he reaches. 
But Sharp is going to be thrown out three to five, trying to move over to third base. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit. No errors, one more to left on base. We move to the late innings. We go to the fifth in a 7-7 ball game. Ooh, we got ourselves a ball game, Merle. Didn't look like it early when the Owls jumped out six to nothing, but the Irish have fought back. And the Owls will send up the 11-12 hitters, and back to the top of the order will go. Merle, look who's here. It's the lovely and amazing Mrs. O'Neill. <laughs> See, Courtney, I told you if we got knocked out of the playoffs, I'd have something to do. Just good, kidding. Good bro. to have career options. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. I mean, we we can call the game, but it really helps to have somebody who knows the kids, knows the program. It adds so much uh, for all the fans and the friends out there. It is beyond my pleasure. I mean, we've got to have Shane Hilda joining us on one of the later broadcasts, but, you know, can't have everything. Well, you know, Sugar Shane, he's, he's a media professional. <laughs> I might have to watch that one, and, uh, and that way I can get ready for next year. I was actually going to be a little intimidated having to work with the boss, but he's working with our other <laughs> crew, so I escaped. There you go. Kellner will lead it off here, reach on an air, scored in the second inning. 7-7 ball game, top of the fifth. How you doing, Gentry? <laughs> Kellner steps in. Swung on, foul back to the screen. One of the things that's been kind of cool for me is uh, I coordinate all of our crews throughout the entire school year here. And uh, Gentry Williams, our producer, Justin and Enrique, the other two gave. I haven't met them until today. No kidding. Just communicated by text, phone, email, whatever. So kind of cool to come out here and actually put faces with names. Wow, for the first that's, time. that's fantastic. Well, that's the way the world's heading now. Getting yep. back to normal where we can all see each other. And it's uh, the way it should be. It's, yep. been a, it's been a long, hard year. Uh, I tell you what, losing a season to COVID for us was, was a big deal out here, you know. I bet, yeah. Um, that's made this year even a little more special. Yeah. Just yep. getting it in. Boy, the kids were like pent up horses when they got out here those first right. couple weeks. I know all of our high school coaches said the same thing. They just felt so bad for their seniors last year that lost their seasons. Absolutely. Lost their proms, all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. One strike to Kellner, leading it off here in the sixth inning for the Owls. That ball knocked down, but Infield single, nice job there by Bertillion to get a glove oh on. Now boy. the throw gets hot in the right field. Oh yeah, yeah. Ooh, kind of an awkward slide. Hope he's okay. Jamie Knee doing that. He's all right. Tough break there. Good solid hit by Kellner. Moves up the second on the throwing error. Shepard Scott will step in, struck out his first at bat. And the Owls have the go-ahead runner in scoring position with nobody out here in the fifth inning. Old Shepard, the center fielder. Heads up. Foul ball. Batting 286 on the year. Says here he can eat Oreos for days. Oh, wow. Hopefully not the same one. <laughs> I hope not. He also prays before he plays. Good for you, young man, Shepard Scott. I grew up with his mother in Louisiana, actually. Oh, yeah? That's yeah, we're both transplants. World. Swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. That ball hit on the left side, and it's going to drop in front of the left fielder for a base hit. They're going to wave the runner around third. Nope, they're going to hold him up there. Runners to the corners. Ball gets loose on the infield. Now they got to play at second. They're just going to hold on to it. So runners at second and third. Nobody out. Back to the top of the order we go. That's a really deep shot by Mr. Scott there. Yeah. Heck, heck of a shot to left field. Good shot, good, good hit, Shepard Scott. That was a good job holding the runner at third base. No need in late innings. Maybe in the first inning you try that, but you got runners at second and third. You got the top of the order coming up. Just let those guys drive them in. That's right. 
You don't need that first out at home plate right. in an inning. All right, the conferences are over. Coming up at 3 o'clock, it'll be the Miners' Championship game. That'll be over on the East Field. We'll be back for the Juniors' Championship game one at 5 o'clock. Game two to follow if needed. That's a double elimination tournament at 7 o'clock. And that would be going on at the same time as the Majors' Championship game number one over on the East, on field. The East field. Yeah. Popped up. Left side coming in and it's going to drop as a foul ball. Majors game one tonight. If game two is needed, that would be tomorrow night at 7.30. Back over on the east field. Well, Zowell showing off those bats. A lot, a lot of hits to the outfield today. All these games will be available for replay on vipe.com, vype.com. Might not get posted until later today or tomorrow. Ground ball, left side. They're going to score the run. Throw over to first in time to get the out. Runner at third base, but one run scores, and the Owls regain the lead 8-7. to seven. RBI field is choice for Rolls. One out, Kelvis scores. Scott moves up to third, and Eric Savitz will step in. Savitz one for two, reach on an error, scored in the first inning. Owls have reclaimed the lead here in the top of the sixth inning. Savitz's mom is super proud of his ability to put on his baseball uniform in the car, super fast, on the way to practice. I think that's a skill that all mothers <laughs> wish, wish their boys had. Right. In our house, first you have to find the uniform. Right, right. It's all a process, right? You're probably not alone in that. <laughs> Ground ball left side. That's going to score another run. And another 6-3 put out. Another RBI fielder's choice. And it's now 9-7. to seven. The Savas drives in the second run of the inning on another fielder's choice. Two outs as Scott scores with two in. That'll bring up Brooke Wise with two outs and the base is empty. That's good baseball right there. Just put the ball in play and get the run home. Do your job, Merle. Yep. Do your job. You got runners in scoring position. Get up there. Do your job. Doesn't have to be fancy. Put right. it in play. Wise one for two with a single. Also popped out the short. 9-7 now. Owls on top here in this top of the sixth inning. And that one took a funny hop over Bertillion's glove. Would have been an infield single anyway. And again, the ball gets loose on the infield. And that's kind of what set the table to start this rally. Yeah, exactly. So Wise moves up to second base for Lee Huckner. Can't take that cut and that relay for granted today. That's right. Hit in the air to center field, coming on and making the catch. Well, the center field, a nice job there for the Irish. Wow. I tell you what, those catches in the outfield have a way of uh, being pivotal. That was a great catch. Uh, Jack Yarrow coming in to make that catch. Absolutely. Got a little worried when he and uh, Betancourt kind of almost collided there. Oh, man, I was holding my breath there, Merle. I'm not going to lie to you. But in the inning for the Owls, they pick up the two go-ahead runs, and they get them on three hits. Leave a base runner. We will go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Nine to seven, Owls on top. Some really clutch at bats there by the back of that Owls order to get the uh, get the big hitters in place to move them around and get those runs. Good baseball there. And that'll be the bottom of the order to do up here for the Irish. 11, 12, and one hitters. Opengo, Young, and then back to the top of the order will go.
I love everything about baseball season except dealing with the bright sun and the wind. <laughs> I hear that. You know, we have a great tradition out here where each kid has their own walk-up song, Merle. So oh, cool. they select it and they get their own little soundtrack as they come up to plate. So here's Antonio Pingo to lead it off here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Infield single and scored in the third. Pitch outside. Some of these kids are as well known for their dancing as they are for their baseball <laughs> as they swagger up to the plate. Ground ball. Knocked down by the pitcher. The throw to first, and it is going to be in time. Way to stay with it. Nice job there by Betancourt. One away, and that will bring up Luke Young. Young RBI single in the third inning. Luke, the center fielder. Swung out and missed. Tapper, Betancourt has it. Gathers himself, makes a good throw. Back to back, one, three putouts, two away. And back to the top of the order will go now to Robbie Huffman. Like I was telling you, that, that pitch position gets a lot of yeah. action. And Betancourt's uh, making short work of those balls to him. He's really taking his time, being patient, gathering up before the throw, everything you want one of these Pee Wee pitchers to do. And as a result, he's got two outs with the bases empty for Huffman, who is one for two with an RBI single in the third inning. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Although he's playing baseball today, Robbie wants to be a football player. The ball is coming. That ball ground to the right side. Knocked down, everybody's gonna be safe. May have been deflected by Betancourt and kind of threw off the timing a little bit. But Huffman's aboard with two away for Driscoll Bertillion. Good hard hit there by Huffman. Made it through two holes in the Swiss cheese there. <laughs> Bertillion a double, also reached on a field this choice and scored in the third inning. Now the steal attempt, and that throw's going to sail a little bit high. Gets out in the center field. Get back to the wall. They're going to wave the runner around. Nobody so, uh, Merle, one of the unique things about Pee Wees is we don't let that, that runner go from third to home okay. on, on a bad throw on defend, defending the steal. So Huffman held at third base with two outs. That's a big run right there for the Irish. You're down by two. You know it. With four outs remaining. Got kind of the meat of the bat, bats here coming up for the Irish. Poked in the air to center field. Coming on, it's going to drop in there. One run is going to score. Ronnie Kurtz heading for second to Bertillion. He will pull up there with an RBI double, and it's 9-8. to eight. Timely hit by Bertillion there, driving in the run. The go ahead, run at home. That bat, tying a run on second. For Bo Terre, who is one for two. Let's see what Bo Bear can do here. You know, uh, Bo's dad and Driscoll's dad, the two coaches of the Irish, grew up playing high school baseball together at St. Thomas and are best friends. Sean was a pitcher, Darren was the catcher, and so. Uh, That's going to drop in for a base hit. They're going to wave the runner around, challenge the throw. We're going to have a tie ball game, I believe. Throw comes in. Oh, they got him. What a relay. Great play by Wise. Great play by the catcher. 7-6-2 to cut down Bertillion at the plate and to keep it a 9-8 ball game heading to the sixth inning. Outstanding play there. I didn't think 
Well, you heard me. I didn't think there was any chance they were going to get him at home. I didn't think so either. Credit there with the left fielder, Everett Eichsman. They get to the ball quickly. He fired a strike to Wise, hit his cutoff man. But Wise fired a strike to the catcher. Well, I tell you what, old Wise, as they say, I've learned from these kids this season, he dropped an absolute dime right there. Right. He dropped a dime into the catcher. Catcher put a good tag on him. Great play. Really great play. That was a big defensive play there. That Merle. was. So we would go to the sixth inning, nine to eight. Owls on top looking for a little insurance here. Are the defending champions. Kellen McCartney do up. It'll be five, six, and seven hitters do up for the Owls. Oh, wow. You don't have any eligibility left at this level, <laughs> huh? <laughs> His years out here are done, bro. That's right. Got to be kind of cool to watch him grow through the program and advance year from year like that. It sure is cool. So my, uh, he, he's finishing up his junior juniors year here, which is he's come full circle. And uh, as he's leaving, thankfully, I've got another little one coming through. But it's, uh, it's a special place. So here we go to the top of the sixth inning. Kellen McCartney stepping in, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Grounded out the short a couple of times. Popped up left side with the ballpark holds it. Nope. Well, barely did, but no chance to get to it. On foul back to the screen. Nine runs unofficially on 15 hits for the Owls. Eight runs on unofficially 14 hits for the Irish. Pretty tight ball game, Merle. Yep. Ground ball left side. Amos has it. The throw to first. Pulls him off the bag, but he made the tag on the way Got by. Him. Nice wow. play. That's another great play by Tier there. Just heads up, knowing he was off the bag, but getting the glove out there for the tag. That's some good first base there, Merle. 5 3 put out, retires McCartney. Everett Eichsman will step in. Reach on an error, scored, also grounded out the third. Got to be distracting to have that big old pitching machine right in your line of sight when you're trying to throw to first. <laughs> it is. I think they get so used to it. Popped up. Ballpark will hold this one. Oh, Amos can't hang on to it. Good Again, effort there. Infield kind of sloping off there to the right side. Ground ball. Moore's got it. Gathers himself to throw to first and oh, wow. not in time. Hustling down the line was Eichsman. Good dig there. Great base running by Big E to get on. That'll bring up Richard Smith with one out, one aboard. Smith won for two in the game. I was looking for some insurance here in the sixth inning. Irish trying to keep it a one run ball game heading into their final at bat. A little scribble to the right side. That's going to drop on the infield. They're going to go to short and get the lead runner. Good play there. Good play. 4-6 put out. Keller to Bertillion for two away. Smith is aboard at first with two outs for Pablo Pereira. This young man is two for two in the ball game. Let's see what Paulie can do here. 
Looking you know, the at, Owls would like that extra insurance. Yeah, they, they would. Get it. Looking ahead to the Irish Six, it's four, five, and six hitters, so a couple of tough at-bats coming up for the Irish. That ball out in the left field for a base hit, and it's going to go to the wall. Going to wave the runner on second. They're going to try to wave him around, get the insurance. The throw to the plate coming, and it is in time. They're going to get it. Another throw out at the plate. I'm telling you. 7-5-2 this time to cut down Richard Smith and keep it a run-run ball game. Well, I tell you what, those are two amazing relays and tags. and Oh, wow. That's some good baseball, Merle. Seeing the Owls play they made and that play right there. Yep. That's the way it should be. Here we go. Put we your seatbelt on, Merle. <laughs> we'll go to the bottom of the six. Still a one-run ball game. Can't blame him. Put the pressure on the defense. Try to get that run home. Merle, I'm not going to lie to you. This game's so uh, so good, it's making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Proud of these kids. I mean, look at this crowd. Yep. They're out here playing for their families, their grandparents, their buddies. And the moment's not too big for any of them. They are bringing it, bringing their best baseball. Really some excellent plays right there. I like the fact that you see so many of the kids from the other teams out here in their uniforms. Absolutely. We recognize the Longhorns before this game. They went undefeated this year in the regular season, yep. which is uh, very hard to do out here. Charlie Amos to lead it off. He is one for two with an RBI double in the third. Nine to eight. Owls on top. They jumped out to a six to nothing lead. Irish came back with seven runs to take a 7-6 lead. They got them all in the same inning. Owls tied it up 7-7. Got two more a couple innings ago. And here we are, 9-8. I'm wrong. I don't think we could have drawn this up any better, my nope. friend. You played all spring, regular season, got through the tournament, and it comes down to the final half inning in a one-run ball game. And Chuck, Chuck, batting 7.45 this year, so. Here we go. Pitch down low. All right, made a little tweak out of the pitching machine, it looks like. Now we're ready. Ground ball knocked down by the shortstop to throw it to first from Wise in time. Nice Sixthly play. put out, one away. Great play by Wise there. One out bases empty for Carter Moore, who was one for two, had a two RBI single in the third. Just a housekeeping note, so should should the Irish scratch one across her, we'll obviously keep going. Looks like we may have lost video, but we'll keep going here with the radio call. We're still on the air. One out, base is empty. Chopper left side. Wise again gobbles it up. And again, another put out. And the Owls are one out away from repeating as champions. That's great. Two BBs from Wise right there. Showing off that lead pipe for an arm that he's got. Two very nice plays. 
I don't know if you saw that. He was bobbling that one on the yeah. transfer and still made the play. So here's Owen Keller. Irish down to their final out, down by one. We'll Keller one for two. See if the Irish have a two out rally in them here. And he's going to pull up there with a two-out double, tying one at second base with two away. Irish aren't done. Old Tree Trunks is up here. They do Trey Levin. Two outs, tying one at second. Who do you think is more nervous, Coach Bertillion or Tree Trunks? <laughs> <laughs> Two outs, tying run to second base. And a one-run ball game. Trail 11, 0 for 2. Popped out to third, grounded out to second. Keller the runner at second, representing the tying run. All right, we got our video back. Brown ball right side, scooped up by the second baseman, the throw to first, just in time, and the ball game is over, and the Owls have repeated as champions for the final score of nine to eight, a valiant comeback attempt by the Irish coming up just short here, what a game. Man, congrats to the Owls, that was an incredible baseball game. That's the way it should be out here. Nine to eight, blood, sweat, and tears, uh, great game. Great game. Hats off to the Owls and hats off to the Irish. We're going to keep it here for just a minute. I think we're going to have an award ceremony. I don't want to cut the stream until we know for sure. But uh, Well, Merle, it was a pleasure. I'm going to go hand out some awards. Awesome. Thank you for very much for your help. Enjoyed meeting you, and uh, congratulations for you and all the hard work you guys you, have done this you year. You bet, Merle. Thanks to Vibe. We really appreciate you all this year. You all are changing the game. Appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Christian O'Neill, Commissioner of the Pee Wee League. He's going to don his other hat and go out there and hand some awards. We'll keep it here for the award ceremony. Nice job by the tech crew here scrambling and taking out the sledgehammer to get the camera working. Nice job, Gentry. 9-8, your final score. What a ball game. put the boss on here, Mr. Shane Hildreth, who I believe, if my memory's right, I'm getting old and forgetful, but right. when you were last out here two years ago, you were the head coach of the Owls, is that correct? We were the head coach of the Owls, and uh, history repeats itself today. Back-to-back -to -back wins for the Owls against the Irish. Pretty exciting. Uh, we got our whole Owls team here from two years ago watching this game, cheering on the Owls. So it's a little tighter game this year uh, than it was two years ago, but congratulations to the Owls. This is uh, a moment these kids are never going to forget. And you're going to be joining us later on this afternoon for the majors broadcast. Is that correct? I will be doing the majors broadcast. Awesome. Uh, so we were in the majors this year and lost in the quarterfinals. So my availability opened up, even though I didn't <laughs> want it to. <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate you coming out here and setting this all up. It's uh, been a scramble here today, but we enjoy doing it every year. We really missed last year, so good to be back after this year. It is. This league is like nothing else. I mean, it's home for these kids. I mean, you can see all these kids out here who aren't playing, right. and they're here cheering. It's it's a community, and uh, everybody's going to miss it come tomorrow. Well, Shane, appreciate the time. We'll see you later on this afternoon. Sounds good, Merle. Good job. This is Shane Hilda, the CEO of Vite Media, joining us here in just a minute. And uh, we're waiting for the awards ceremony. Nine to eight, the final score. Give you the unofficial numbers here first for the victorious Owls, who I believe finished up the season 15-4 and one, the number five seed out of the league. They wind up with nine runs. They got them on 17 hits unofficially. And a five season comes to an end for the Irish with a final mark, I believe, of 15, three and two. Eight runs on 15 hits. Both teams had runners cut down at the plate. Both teams had chances to win, chances to lose. A one run ball game. 
Couldn't have asked for anything better. We're just kind of hanging on here for the award ceremony. Gentry, I'm going to throw you on. You've been working all day here. Mr. Gentry Williams, our producer extraordinaire, he's, been, he's the one wielding the sledgehammer to try to get this equipment to cooperate. Thank you for coming out here, sir. It's been an awesome game so far. It's back and forth. Good to see these kids out there having fun. Um, as you said, we missed it last year, man. It's great to see these kids out here enjoying themselves, and uh, it's, it's a great moment. Okay, yeah. Well, you've been running all over the place for this year, doing a lot of <laughs> high school baseball, high school basketball, a little wrestling, a little swimming, a little bit of everything this year. Yes, sir. It's been an awesome experience, man. Uh, it's, it's something that, you know, is, is awesome. Uh, I, I couldn't change it for the world, man. I love it. Uh, it's, it's been special, man, to be a part of something. Well, I'm glad you got, got to come out here. Glad I got to finally meet you in person. As soon as this award ceremony is done, you and I are going to go to work and move over to the other field and get ready for that one. Yes, sir. I can't wait for it. Awesome. Wind gusting and howling here, blowing paperwork around as we get ready for the award ceremony. Don't forget coming up here at three o'clock. Got another ball game coming up. I think that's, I forget which game that is. Just can't seem to keep it straight, but we'll call it up here. That's right, the Miners over on the east field. Justin Barbosa and Enrique Rodriguez will have the call of that one. We'll be back at 5 o'clock for the juniors game between the Marlins and the Braves. That'll be game number one. Marlins in the winner's bracket of that one. Braves in the loser's bracket. If the Marlins win, we're done. If the Braves win, we'll play a second game at 7 o'clock. And then coming up tonight at 7 o'clock as well, it's the majors game number one between the Pirates and the Astros. All those games coming up here on Vibe Live later on today.
Yeah, you just start by doing it. Thank you. 
Davis. Yeah, like, he's got, he's not, he's like, look at him. 